A War Horse Studios, desenvolvedora do game Kingdom Come Deliverance, estava presente na edição deste ano da Brasil Game Show, trazendo duas novidades. As DLCs Amorous Adventures of Bold Sir Hans Capon e Hathaway Combat Tournament. A primeira DLC traz a história de Sir Hans Capon, que é apaixonado pela filha do açougueiro, quer conquistar o coração da dama e pede ajuda para Henry, protagonista do game. Henry precisa coletar um belo colar, uma poção do amor e ajudar Hans a citar o poema certo para a graciosa Lady. Quem jogou Kingdom Come Deliverance sabe que Hans é um personagem todo atrapalhado e que, inicialmente, é um grande pé no saco do protagonista, mas que no fim acaba virando um grande amigo. Por causa dessas características de Sir Hans Capon, é de se esperar que muita coisa dê errado nessa DLC. O foco dela é adicionar um pouco mais de humor na narrativa, e com o que foi apresentado eu já digo que dei boas risadas. Essa DLC só poderá ser acessada quando você completar a missão secundária do jogo principal, que transforma Hans e Henry em grandes amigos, ou seja, a partir do meio do jogo. Já a outra DLC apresenta o modo torneio implementado no jogo. Ela será uma DLC gratuita com uma pequena quest para liberar o campeonato, que consiste em batalhas contra 3 competidores em duelos de melhor de 3. Ou seja, duas vitórias contra o oponente garantem sua participação para a próxima fase. O difícil desse modo vai ser pelo seguinte. No primeiro embate você pode escolher a arma de preferência, e claro, você vai optar por aquela que você tem mais aptidão. No próximo duelo, o oponente escolherá a arma, e ela pode ser alguma que você tem pouco nível de habilidade. Então o foco é ser bom no combate e rápido nos dedos para conseguir vencer a competição. Tivemos a oportunidade de entrevistar o gerente de relações públicas da War Horse, Toby, que falou um pouco sobre o game, seu desenvolvimento, sobre as DLCs apresentadas e também sobre o futuro do game. Você pode conferir agora a entrevista completa em vídeo. Well, you know uh, exactly why. It's exactly you, you answered already. Uh, when uh, Daniel Vavra and Martin Klima, the founders of Warhol Studios, when they thought about what kind of game they want to do, first they thought before they created the studio, they already knew they want to do Kingdom Come because they saw all the RPGs and all, most of them have sword, shield, and medieval setting, Oblivion, and Scar, even Alex. If you know Alex, it's, it's also sci-fi but with sword and shield so they said there are so many games out there that are talking about middle ages but no one tries to show us how it really was no one shows the real castles everyone has fantasy elements why don't you use something that really happened so they decided let's do a game that is based on a true story that shows middle ages how they were or at least a good interpretation of the middle ages and let's try to do something different Uh, and this is what they decided to do in Kingdom Come Deliverance. So, the, this game takes place in Bohemia, in today's Czech Republic, 50, kilo, 50 kilometers south of Prague. So we went to the places, took pictures of the castle, transferred them into the game. We invited real sword fighters. The guys here, there. We invited those to the studio and told them, how is the medieval fighting working? They showed us. We said, that's not possible for a video game. But together we did a compromise which is our combat system. So the combos are from a medieval manuscript of real fencing moves. We hired a full-time historian to the team who says, yes, no, yes, no, you have to change this because this mask is 600 years later, not your, and so and so. So, as you said, it's very unique. There is no game like this. Uh, of course, it's full of compromises, but it's the closest you can get into 15th century no, the hardest system was not the combat system. Uh, the hardest uh, thing in the entire development is that we had the crazy idea that every person in the game has a daily cycle. So everyone, they are not randomly spawned. Like if you take Assassin's Creed or something, the cities look like full of people, but they are spawning and they are just walking and then they despawn again. In Kenya Come Elements, no one is spawning. They are all there the entire time doing something. So they wake up in the morning, they wash themselves, they go to work and so on and so on and so on. And so on. on PC, it works great. On consoles, it was super hard. It was super hard to make the consoles run this kind of thing. So the, the hardest thing was finishing the game. Uh, 
all the different elements put together, see what doesn't work together, and then optimize it, optimize it, optimize it, make it, make it run. So that was probably the hardest part. different things. Uh, I liked, for example, a lot scouting the areas, scouting the places. So I was there, I'm a PR guy, but still I make pictures for social media and so on. So it was for me f fascinating that the people from the area were like with big eyes and yeah, and, and they were when they heard that they want to... For example, there's a big monastery in the game, which today is still existing and people are visiting it, but they pay money and they can look around. But it was partially destroyed and changed. We are building it back to the time how it looked in the year 1403. And when the people heard this from this church, they are not into video games, but when they heard that we are doing this, they were like, wow. And they let us go everywhere, at, at every corner of the church, people where no one else can go into the bell town, everywhere. And this was super fun to scout the area, to see the enthusiasm from people who are not into video gaming. Right now, the Czech office of the Czech tourism office, Czech Republic, they called us and they are now offering a Kingdom Come Deliverance tour through the area where it takes place. So the most fun thing I think was to see the enthusiasm from non-gamers from non about this game. But uh, for me the most fun part in the game is the combat. I like a lot the one versus one combat, with the, especially when there is block block, block, and then you attack. Yeah. And this is what I like most about the game itself. No, it's, it's only story elements. So you have three big quest lines coming with the Hammer's Adventures. The new feature, and that's why it's grey, the new feature is the tournament mode. So that's a repeating sandbox event. Yeah, but there's not not a new element like, I don't know, crossbows. There are no crossbows in the game, we don't add them. So, it stays as it is, no new area, but more questing, more fun, more things to do, uh, more uh, story elements, and with the tournament, a new event to attend. I think we are an indie studio with a AAA production. So of course we are one those people are two people, we are 100 people, so of course it looks different. Yeah? But we, start, we had a very hard time in the beginning, we had to find the money, three years of struggling, we almost closed the studio, then we found an investor, but he said no, 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 first show me business case, so we need to go on Kickstarter, on Kickstarter it was like please give us money, they gave us money and then we created a community and from this day we are very close and contact with them so we showed five alphas and one beta and always asked do you like it yes no too much talking not enough talking how do you like the combat system and with the feedback we were working uh, on day of release still we were not sure what media says or journalists says because I showed them the game all the time but then when they're testing it alone without me telling them then yeah, what are they going to say and the good thing is that they said it's buggy fair we can change that but no one said the concept is bad. No one said historical games, not fun. No one said realism, not cool. So they said concept is good. And this is very important because the concept is nothing. We couldn't, we couldn't change that. Yeah. So we are very, very happy that people were accepting the buggy thing in the beginning. That's maybe the indie thing. We tried to be very open to them, tell them. And they said, it's okay, it's okay. So yes, of course, we are very happy for the reception. Uh, no, because we uh, we had no, on day on release we had no DLC plan, oh. so we had to wait until is it successful? Yes. Okay, we can go on. So our uh, company politics is step by step. So right now we finished Hans Kapon. Now we start working on Band of Bastards. After this, we started working on Woman's Lot. So right now no other plans and just doing step by step by step by step and then we don't know a release date but because we just started to work on it but probably I don't know three months but this is just a wild guess so okay. I 
I want to thank a lot to the Brazilian fans because we have a Brazilian community, which we also didn't know. So uh, we found out that on social media and forums and on the sales that Brazil is quite interested in this game, which is good because we, ne we almost did no PR here, no marketing, nothing. It's just people were interested in this. So my word for the Brazilian fans is thank you for supporting us. Thank you for making this happen. Because of them, we can be here. And the other way around, uh, keep supporting us. We are bringing new stuff. And if they want to see how the Middle Ages looked like, because you didn't have this kind of stuff here yeah. in, in Brazil, then Kingdom Come is your game, because there you can feel, see how the, the knights uh, behaved and worked and fight and so on. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Kingdom Come Deliverance já está disponível para PC, PlayStation 4 e Xbox One. E as DLCs serão lançadas no dia 16 de outubro desse ano.